Hey guys, I'm Reason Juvie Side, and I got a video for you guys today, and it's a tutorial on OBS multi-platform. Now, I did a tutorial earlier, before, on the regular OBS, which I'm actually using right now to record this video. And OBS multi-platform is pretty much just an update to the software, but I use them both for two different things, as multi-platform is not quite there yet, so... Give it time and it'll be something to use. And like the name suggests, it is compatible across all three platforms. So you go to the OBS website, which I'll put a link in the description at obsproject.com. So click on that and you'll be presented with this. And obviously you want to get the OBS multi-platform for whatever operating system, but this is going to be for Windows 7, 8, and 10. So click that, it'll download. And you'll get an icon that looks, I don't know, you look for it in my start menu. It looks like this. And it gives you the 32-bit one. I just delete that shortcut and right-click this 64-bit and put the taskbar or whatever. So I end up with this. i have to wait for it to pop up on screen here. It takes a little bit longer to load. Travis is actually going to be in my second monitor, but yeah, there we go. Now, when you first get this, let me delete some of these. There you go. When you first get multi-platform installed, you'll be presented with a pretty bland looking thing. And again, I'm just going through, well, I can go through both if you want, but it, because it's all tied into one thing, there's a number of features on here that are better than the regular OBS, such as it'll find a game automatically. As long as it's full screen, it'll find that and it'll, it'll capture it. Some games, that is, not all of them. And that's one issue why I haven't used this a lot. But I'm just going to go ahead and start a new profile here. So new, I'm going to call it test. Press OK. And what I'm going to do here from next is go to File, Settings. And this page, under the general, you can pick your language. As well as a theme, which has a dark theme that looks like this. You know, really Adobe-ish. That's what it looks like to me, or... I don't know. I'm just going to use default. So we go to stream here and obviously you put your key in here, which I don't have right now, but I use a regular OBS for that, but yeah. Obviously you pick the server closest to you, whatever. Service is Twitch or YouTube or whatever. And everything else I don't really mess with there because, well, I don't stream with this one. I stream with the other OBS, but here you have simple output settings. Actually quite simple, much more simplified than the regular OBS if you wish. So you can now change your bit rate on the audio, your, this is for the streaming and recording, all on one page, so that saves me some time. You can set where you want your recording bit to be, you can have the recording quality the same as stream, or make it your own custom thing, which I would do, but... We're going to go past this and go to advanced here on output mode. Which gives you a whole big range of options. Now for streaming, the audio track is how many audio tracks you want to record. I just use one for streaming because it's going to be mixed into one anyway, so it don't matter. Encoder X264, that's all that's available. I just check the for streaming service encoder settings so it's more, I guess, compatible with Twitch or something. Rescale output I have unchecked because it's just going to rescale your output, but I mess with this later in video. But yeah, your bitrate is obviously going to be around, well, this, since I think Twitch only allows 3,000 for streaming, by the way. Key from interval should be 2 for Twitch, so I'll just set that. UCBR, sure. The CPU uses preset. I always put super fast for some reason. That's just my preference and main. And that's it for streaming. And now we click the recording tab. The type. You can go custom output, which I don't do, so click standard. You set up your recording path. Yeah, you set up your recording path, the recording format. I always put MP4. And for audio track, I put two. So click apply, hand encoder, go to X264, which gives you the same range of options, but let's see for video, 
I'm gonna go with uh, I don't know, thirty thousand, like thirty megabits. That's just what I use for my higher quality. But yeah, this I have unchecked. Even interval, leave at zero for recording. Constant bit rate I use. The CPU usage again. I put to super fast. Profile to main, to main, <laughs> and press apply. Now this next thing is optional, but you can cheat, tweak your uh, audio, I guess, to what you want it to be. So I always put mine at one nine two and one nine two, and these are the two audio tracks I set up. So those are the you know track one and two. So we'll get into this in a second. And you can see the audio thing down here. This is just where you pick your mic and your speakers or whatever. You can see mine already set. Sample rate, I can go to 44.1 kilohertz, 48,000, or 48 kilohertz. Channels, you have stereo, mono. <laughs> Obviously stereo. And pretty much leave that alone. So on to video. Now here you pick your renderer, which I use DirectX, which is Direct3D, whatever. Video adapter automatically picks for me. The base, I want that to be a more monitor resolution. And for the output resolution, I want it to be the same as my monitor. For the fact is, I want to record in 1080p, you know, 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second. But if you want, you can record in 720 by dropping it down to 720p there. But I don't do that, so I'm putting it back to 1920 by 1080. You know, this video is going to be for... Actually, let me put this by cubic back. For the downscale filter, that's when you pick 720p, but... Yeah. Now, frames per second, you can have 30, which I do for tutorials, or 60. For, you know, high-speed games and Call of Duty and crap like that. I don't play Call of Duty, so yeah, I don't know. Anything you get 60 FPS and looks a lot smoother, so you can record at that, but for this video, I'm using 30 because, well, why not? It's only a tutorial. And for the hotkeys, you can set whatever you want. You can set one for streaming as well, but if you just want to do local recording, just set one for recording, and I'm pressing apply, and everything else, you can have a mute button for your microphone, or, you know, push to talk for it, same with the desktop audio. And on to advance, which there's really nothing to do here. I just leave this page alone. You can set this to 709 if you want a better color density, I believe. Same thing with full. It'll make it actually darker, but it actually have more colors. So press OK, and those settings should be saved. Now you can see we still have nothing going on here. But we'll get to that in a second. What I'm going to do here is talk about the microphone settings. And you see three cogs here. Three gears and pretty much settings for the microphone and desktop. So first thing I do is go to mixer. Now if you have a mono microphone or, or let's say I'm doing XLR. So if I have it plugged in on one side, that was the same as on my old audio interface. I put down mix to mono on the microphone and that made it so it was... Both speakers. I don't have to do that no more because of my mixer I got, but yeah. Desktop audio, I put the value to 25% for the fact is. I don't want the game to be too loud when I'm playing. Or whatever I'm doing. So yeah, microphone at 100. You can go past 100 to give it some boost. Which I don't do no more, so yeah. You can pan left and right, don't touch that. I don't know why you would, but yeah. Same with this. Now for tracks... This is important, I guess. You can see you have an option for four, but if you remember back on the audio thing, you could select one or two tracks, and I put two. So, I, you know, you don't want to have them both clicked one and two, one and two, because it's just going to mix into each other on the recording. But what I do here is, for desktop, I set it to one, and for the microphone, two. So when I look at my... When I go to edit my videos, I can mess with my mic volume as well as the desktop separately, but they're all... Recorded together so they don't get out of sync. So make sure that's just one and two. You can alternate them if you want, but just don't have them on the same thing or it's just going to overlap. Now, if you want a noise gate, you right click on or you just click on the gear here under Mic Ox, go to Filters, and you can actually add a noise gate by clicking this plus sign here. It gives you two options gain and noise gate, but 
I already have a noise gate set up, so that's my preferences. You can also click on it and go to properties and it just shows you what you're using, I guess. Now, the same thing goes for the desktop audio, so that's all there is. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a game and we'll see how this works. Okay, actually, I should set up a scene first. Say you want to record your desktop. Right click on scenes and I'm just going to, I don't know, call it desk. <laughs> And then right click here on sources, click add, and go to display capture. So it captures my monitor, which you can see right there. You see, my monitor is being captured. You can resize it if you want. So there's that now. If you want games, you're going to want to do this right now. So right click, go to add, which is on type in GA for games. These are source scenes here and for sources. Add and go to game capture. Press OK. Now here, if you click on Capture Third Party Overlays, it crashes on me, so I don't do that. Or it won't pick up the game at all, so don't do that. <laughs> and me, for everything, has this anti-cheat. I need to have this enabled, which will which work, so just press OK. You're still presented with a blank screen, so at this point, I'm going to go open up a game and switch to my second monitor real quick. So give me a second. All right, you can see that uh, my other OBS is next to this one, but there's that blank screen. So let's go uh, open up a game here. I'll just pick Borderlands 2 for reference, you know. Press play. You can't see this right now, but it'll eventually be showed up. So this might take a while on board on here. Give it time. And any second, this should pop up on OBS multi-platform, which it did right there. So you can see it's picking up the game and what you see on the display is going to be what it actually going to look like while you're recording. I haven't clicked record yet, so I'm going to right now if I can actually I'm going to alt tab out real quick. I got to press start recording because I didn't set a hotkey or I might have I'm just well after that horrible failure I had to redo this. Oh, I had to go back to Borderlands, which is going to load up right now. Hopefully. So I said before, once you see that on multi-platform, which you should right now, it's going to record, but that's what it looks like. So I'm not recording it, but I will. Once I press the high key right about now, you can see it started. It says start recording. Now it says stop recording. So it's recording now. And I actually put this video while this is going on. So you can see gameplay. It's a little stuttery now because I'm kind of struggling to record on two devices here. Now, if it stutters really badly, the first one thing I found out stop the recording there. Um, you can uh, might as well exit out now since you're still seeing that on that screen. But while you're recording, if it starts to stutter, exit out the program, you know, multi platform. I'm gonna switch this back to my main monitor now. So you can see it's back to black once you're done recording. But to show that it did record, I'll open up the video. If I can find it. Oh, that's right. It's on my page here. That's not as trucking. So it might be this one. So you can see there's the recorded file. And you saw that I was recording it with multi-platform. So there you go. So that's really all there is to multi-platform. And you know, I'm going to close that out. You can want to see what the videos come out as. I'll just uh, go to the Vegas here real quick. Throw in Borderlands 2, that clip. And you can see there's two audio tracks here. One's a microphone and one's the gameplay. So you'll see, you know, it says stop recording. So it's recording now. See, that was from the video. Yeah, well, this is going on. See, I can mess with my volume. So you can see gameplay. A little stuttery now because I'm kind of. Yeah, you can mess with the volume on two devices here. So that's pretty much it. You're done with the uh, multi platform. There's not much to it. It's actually not bad to use now. 
It was horrible because it would never pick up a game. But now I got it to work somewhat, so there you go. Next one will probably be, I guess the next tutorial will be a shadow play, which I also use to record things that are not commentated. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is. So this has been Simbrace and Chewy side.